Managing a healthy diet is key if you or someone you know has diabetes. So registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner is here. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. And chances are you know somebody with it's diabetes. True. Right, yes. And we've got myths because there really are top three myths when it comes to managing diabetes. And it all con comes back, of course, to the basic food that we put in our mouth. So you want to start with myth number one. Myth number one. Yes. Oftentimes when people are either diagnosed with diabetes or they're thinking about a family member, they think that the most relevant thing to look at on a label is the sugar. Right, and I can see why that would be. You bet. But you say you have to actually look more specifically at the carb label. The carbohydrate is much more relevant. Why and that's that? because sugar is one type of carbohydrate. And what I've got is a little spread of all the different foods that contain carbohydrate in them. Yes. So there is naturally occurring sugar found yes. in obviously your fruits and your veggies, okay. which is actually a surprise to a lot of people will know maybe that fruit has natural sugar in it um, but also vegetables the main sort of way they have calories in them is actually from the carbohydrate the carbs, just yeah. some for example like cucumbers here that I've got are really yeah. low in them yes um, so when you're looking at a label it's the overall carbohydrate load that's much more important to focus on okay than the grams of sugar okay if you have diabetes so then when people figure that out I think their next go-to is to think well why don't I just cut out all the foods with carbohydrates or high carbs and you say not necessarily not you not bet necessarily. so carbohydrates essential nutrition nutrient that we all need for um, our healthy brain yes. functioning concentration, energy, muscle fuel. And if you cut too many carbohydrate out, you're gonna feel sleepy and grumpy and miserable. So you really right. need to have um, a good level of carbohydrate in your body. Okay. Um, and the key thing too, often people think I have to eliminate all white carbs and I have to eliminate sugar if I have diabetes. And that is very much a myth as well. It's okay. really understanding quantity that is really the most important okay. thing. That's one of the things you say. If you are diabetic, you should really be focusing on smaller meals and more consistent snacks. It's not you often bet. we hear that, like snack, snack, snack. Yes, so much smaller meals at a time gives your body um, the ability to manage that carbohydrate or sugar coming into the body. So I've okay. got a measuring cup here that I brought in. Oh, great. Um, and a good place to start if you have diabetes, this is about a half a cup, and this guy here is about a cup. Yep. Um, I would start with about a half to one cup of any kind of grain or starch, potatoes, really starchy types of food, cereals yep. at a time and see how that's managing okay. with your blood sugar control. Because what ends up happening if, let's say you're having pasta yeah. and you had garlic toast. Yeah. So most people have a you know, cup, two cups of pasta and a couple slices of garlic toast. And if you've got right. diabetes, this is just too much coming in all at once. It adds up really quickly. You bet. Okay, so then the last uh, myth that we have is about avoiding dessert. Some people think they got to cut up desserts altogether and then replace sugars with artificial sweeteners. Your take on that is? You bet. So again, um, all foods can fit even if you have diabetes. It's understanding that don't have, let's say, a big supper meal and a heavy dessert on top of it. It's right. just too much sugar coming in all at once. It's right. really key to spread them out. Um, the other thing with desserts is you don't necessarily have to eat ones that are sugar-free or the diet-based foods that have all the alternative sweeteners. It's looking at the ones that are less sweet. So okay. cakes that don't have a thick layer of icing, for example, yeah. is going to be a good place um, to go. And really looking at the recipes that you're using um, and seeing where you can cut back on the level of sugar. Okay. You know, as a foodie myself, I'm an advocate yes. for just eating real food. A little yes. white sugar or honey or brown sugar is not going to kill you if you have diabetes. And it goes a long way. It goes a long way. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm not a fan of the taste of those alternative sweets. They taste terrible. Andrew so a and I little were just bit saying, you can just taste thing. the aspartame so quickly. <laughs> and a, a lot of uh, people who are in your world don't recommend sweeteners in general at all, right? So, you know, Health Canada and Canadian Diabetes Association does say they are safe yeah. for consumption. But again, food has to taste delicious. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, I'm always gonna start with, what do you love? Eat a small portion of yeah. what you really love, and then really think about, okay, well, where can I cut back on those really obvious sources of sugars? Right. Pop being the big one that we're, of course, always after Makes in the sense. health professional world. You and like the good quality stuff. Yeah, That's and have a little bit that. of the real thing. That's great. Thank you so much to registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner. Of course, for more information, go to her website. It's such a great resource.